Okay, I'm now live. Ha Hello, everybody. It's October 2nd. Welcome to October. You, you know, in complaining many people about it's raining in Baltimore for like about the 10th straight day, but we've been fortunate. The rain has not been very intense. It's kind of the drizzling, the raining happens a little bit every day for, for a few hours, usually when I'm trying to go to work. But we recognize all of, some of you in the audience probably North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, the, the waters and the floods, just incredible destruction. We always know that it's hard to argue with Mother Nature, and it's also just a sign of global warming. You know, when you get a hurricane in Florida and its biggest impact is on Asheville, North Carolina, uh, just a total disaster, and our heart goes out to all those people and hope they're safe and doing well and um, you know, just, it, it's the future, and I don't know, you can't really prepare, you can't really prepare for a flood. You can have some increased food in the house and water and all those things, but, you know, when, when the rivers go up 20 feet and they go up six feet higher than they've ever done in history, and the flood that occurs every 1,000 years seems to be occurring once every two years, um, you know, it, it's really difficult. So. I'm not the weatherman, and uh, but I just thought we'd share our sympathy with everybody and anybody who uh, has been affected. Today, um, I also want to take this time to wish everybody who's Jewish, and there's a lot of you who are Jewish, both in the U.S. and around the world, um, a small part of the population, but uh, this is the Jewish New Year, and uh, what I wish for you, whoever is Jewish, but I wish for everybody, everybody who's non-Jewish, no matter what religion, race, denomination, whatever you are, that the new year brings health and happiness and peace. Peace. I won't even mention, you know, wealth and prosperity. You know, we used to mention, or people would mention that for the new year. But I think these days people know better that really what matters is health and happiness and uh, and peace. And I think in a world that has lots of hostilities, peace would be a good thing for the coming year. And in this election year in the U.S., um, you know, just an amazing amount of hostility. I, people running for office are always going to be arguing, right? That's just, that's politics, right? Vote for me, don't vote for the other guy. But this year it kind of takes on sort of a new level, and it does not show the best of mankind. And uh, I'm not going to be political. Um, but, um, you know, we, we need the best and the brightest leading us because decisions are tough and it's hard to make the right decision even with the best of people. But the government, your hospital, your medical school, your 7-Eleven, your uh, Starbucks, you need to have people who know what they're doing, who have the humanity, who have the insight. You need the Ed Cavills from Pixar and the Jensen Wangs and the Steve Jobs. People with that kind of insight, people who know where things are going, know what they should do, but are concerned about everybody who works for them and works with them. So that's going to be our prayer for the coming year. Now today my talk is on CT of the liver, so let's see. And it's on liver masses. So we're not going to talk about parenchymal disease or fatty infiltration or anything else. We're just going to talk about liver masses. Protocol. We used to do non-contrast scans, localize the lesion, see how it behaves. We rarely do non-contrast scans. Typically, it's arterial and venous, 5 cc per second injection, 100 cc's or so, a little more, a little less, depending where you are and the size of the patient. We then um, will do dual face imaging, typically arterial about 30, 35 seconds, post start of injection, venous at about 70 seconds. Sometimes we will get delayed phase imaging Sometimes if you're not certain something's a hemangioma or you want to see better washout of the tumor like with FNH, you can do delayed at about four or five minutes. We used to get all the phases. Now it's typically just those two phases. Depending how lesions look, I think we can be very certain what the lesions are. We, of course, look at the underlying liver. If the liver is cirrhotic, then everything we see, we're thinking about hepatoma, right? We don't call hemangiomas essentially in cirrhotic livers because they're probably going to be statistically small uh, 
hepatomas, hemangiomas of blood pools in the fibrotic liver, which is the cirrhotic liver, they get compressed and disappear. Mike Fedeli wrote about that years and years ago. So we look at enhancement. We look, is the lesion vascular in its entirety or only at the periphery? If it fills in, is it filling in homogeneous? Is there a central scar? Then we're thinking F and H. Is there a feeding vessel? We're thinking F and H. Uh, marked irregular vascularity, maybe neovascularity. With AV shunting into portal vein, we're thinking hepatoma. Mass, relatively hypovascular, but with dilated ducts, I'm thinking cholangiocarcinoma. Benign lesions, hemangioma, I mentioned peripheral puddling, the lesion fills in peripheral to central. FNH fills in arterial to venous, where the lesion by venous phase or a little bit later is essentially isodense to liver. You may see that central fibrotic scar. Uh, you may see the lesion still visible, a little bit lower or higher density, but that's how far it enhances. Also, FNH is a vascular and they enhance, but they enhance like the IVC. They don't enhance like the aorta. When something enhances like the aorta, I'm always thinking about uh, neovascularity and I'm thinking about a malignancy like hepatoma. Obviously, metastasis, cystic metastasis, you think about ovarian cancer, gist tumor, hypervascular metastasis, you're thinking about renal cell carcinoma, neuroendocrine tumors, melanoma. Also, multiple lesions, we think about metastasis, though hemangiomas can be multiple, hepatic adenomas can be multiple, occasionally FNHs can be multiple. Hepatomas can be multiple in the sense of a big hepatoma, and there's some satellite lesions, but otherwise it's typically going to be a, sol a unilateral mass, typically in a cirrhotic liver a high percentage of the time. Again, key things for you to think about, how does the liver look, not contrast, just in terms of before you inject, is it cirrhotic or after is it cirrhotic? How does the lesion behave? Peripheral enhancement, homogeneous enhancement, irregular enhancement. What about feeding vessels? Neovascularity is typically hepatoma or metastasis, but vessels into the lesion can be FNH or hepatic adenoma. And again, that feeding vessel to the center of the lesion typically is FNH. We talk about metastasis. Again, I mentioned about a range of appearances. Think about the primary tumor, things like um, colon cancer or hypovascular, things like neuroendocrine tumor or hypervascular. So there's a range of hypo or hypervascular metastasis, but again, other findings outside the liver can be helpful. I mentioned cholangiocarcinomas. The primary tumor most likely to have dilated ducts is gonna be a cholangiocarcinoma. Other things can have dilated ducts, obviously, uh, Pancreatic mass growing upward can cause invasion of the liver but, uh, and ducts, but typically we think about cholangio, again I mentioned not hepatoma. Meds can occasionally cause duct obstruction, but it's uncommon. And again, the um, cholangios are typically hypovascular, kind of have well-defined borders to them. They can be infiltrating, can involve the portal vein as well. So again, it's a pattern of things. There's a lot of good cases in our teaching file and a few lectures I've just given about that. Let me see who's around. Hey, Lidiana. Lidiana, uh, how's New York? Probably wet is here. Hey, Lidiana, I'll just use this since we have to set up a time to speak. I know we've been going back and forth. Lidiana was my admin for a long time. Then she decided to work for somebody better at the UCSF who won the Nobel Prize. So I guess if she would have stayed longer with me, maybe I would have won the Nobel Prize, but uh, I don't think so. Um, that guy already won the Nobel Prize for discovering CT. And that was Hounsfield, and that was yesterday, right? It's the 50, 1971 was the first scan, so that's 53 years ago, and Lily put some information on the website. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, that's really about it. Let's see, the other people, hello, John Tavenport, New York. A lot of people are in New York. My grandchildren are in New York, okay? Um, but they're not online at the moment. And they better not be online anyway. Um, but other than that, um, hopefully that helps you a little bit about liver tumors. Again, um, it's a matter of really thinking about things, calculating. Uh, again, protocols are very critical. That four to five cc injection is critical. If you do slow injections, 
you don't get that vascularity, you don't get the information you need to really make the call. So with that, I'll stop there. Again, as I mentioned, look at CT as us. There's some lectures on the topic, we're doing more of them. And with that, I wish everybody a great day and uh, keep safe and all those good things. Okay, bye guys. And now I'm trying to figure out how to stop and end this. This is a first for me, and you can hear me talking. I know you're listening, but I'm trying to figure out how do I end this. Uh, wow, they must have moved something else that, that doesn't let me end this talk. Now, I don't want to end it in a way that's going to erase it. But let me say, ah, here it is. Bye, guys.